good evening, my fiends. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Monster Movie Night. <laughs> oh, what a night it is. I can feel the chill in the air, and oh, the sensations that's coming from the vaults tonight. I haven't felt those chills and, and those feelings in such a long, long time. In fact, it's been mm, nearly a hundred years, uh, nearly, uh, since, well, our good fiends got together, and that was, well, Count Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman himself, you know. They got all together and had some parties, and uh, that was, those were some wonderful days, weren't they, Boris? <laughs> I mean, after all, they invited so many good fiends of ours over, and especially those, uh, there's uh, Limley's, you know, from Universal uh, Studios when they first got started out. <laughs> Carl Jr., he enjoyed coming over for the monster parties very much so. That's where he got all those wonderful ideas for all those uh, feature films of monsters like, well, Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman. And later down the road, he uh, actually put them all together from the parties called uh, and named them, let's see, there was the House of Dracula, there was the House of Frankenstein, and of course, uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. <laughs> Now, they don't make those like they do, like they used to anymore. <laughs> well, hmm, maybe that's not quite so, eh, Boris? In fact, a good fiend of ours, uh, Joe Murrow, who, uh, product who uh, pr co produced a brand new film with a homage towards the Universal uh, uh, creatures, uh, the film is called. Tales of Dracula, and it has, well, Frankenstein's monster Dracula and the Wolfman <laughs> coming back together again for one more party in the, the 21st century, <laughs> and well, what a film it is. So, let us go to the vaults, and we'll rev it up on the old internet haunted TV. Hmm? Let's see if we can get it tuned in for everyone. Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? How dare you? Ah! <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> I've been watching you. <laughs> Let me start by telling you my name. I am Dr. Abraham von Helsing. I am writing this down in my journal as a record of my meeting a man or devil. I was called to a small English town to aid a family friend's daughter who fell under the control of this man known as Count Dracula. This was not my first time in courting this evil. A small group of my fellow colleagues back in Transylvania and led by Father Boris, who is at this very moment attempting to end Count Dracula's last disciple. Somehow, Dracula knows this and has fled by boat and is heading home. We must hurry. It's almost sun up. Look, there she is. Ingrid, he must read her. She's mine. Take Rena home, Ludwig. There's nothing more could be done for Victor or Ingrid but to give them a proper Christian burial. Okay, Father Boris. I must follow him and put an end to his evil reign. Should I fail in my task, may whoever finds this journal please return this to my granddaughter, Jessica. This is not your daughter, Fritz. She's a demon that lives on human blood. If you truly love her, you must put her soul to rest. You can do it. And 
And may you also know that he is real. Fritz, see, she is at peace. Gentlemen, how nice of you to visit. You have come freely, but I fear you will not go safely. Count Dracula, Abraham said he had destroyed you, that he had driven a stake through your heart. There are many things the good professor does not know about my kind, about the powers that I command. Stand back. You have stilled the blood of my blood. I now will have to find a new bride. You will find many facts about this fiendish character, and you will also see the truth of my encounters with him. Many things I've learned over the years of hunting this Count. This journal shall be known as my very own Tales of Dracula. I'm ready, Father. Have you got the list? Yes. Now remember, Lona, you must make your deliveries quickly. When you make the last one... I know. Eggs and bacon for the tavern. Now, by the time you get to the tavern, it might be nightfall. If that happens, then... I know. Wait for you at the tavern. I can help Elsa behind the bar. Stop worrying so much. I'm a big girl now. I feel like Little Red Riding Hood with my basket of goodies. Well, watch out for wolves, Little Red Riding Hood. Sir, can you help me? Where did you come from? Vesaria. I'm looking for the Chateau Frankenstein. Do you know the way? Chateau Frankenstein? Yes. It's a couple miles from here. You wouldn't be able to get there until nightfall. 
Around here, it's not safe to travel after nightfall. Do you know a place I can spend the night? There is a tavern a couple miles down the road, and they have rooms to let. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if someone might offer you a ride up to the chateau. Dr. Peter Frankenstein was very highly thought of in the village. You look a little healthy to be one of his patients. About the tavern, can you point the way? Just follow the road for a couple miles or so. Thank you, sir. How's the food there? It's not bad, but it's not great. If you're looking for something to fill you up, it'll do the job. Just don't tell Anton I told you that. He's very proud of his cooking such that it is. He's the innkeeper. I'm so famished, I'll eat whatever he puts in front of me. Have a good day, sir. Same to you, stranger. Creighton. What? Creighton Reed. I'm mighty fine to make your acquaintance, Mr. Reed. You seem like a nice enough fellow. Oh, I don't know. Some people seem to think so. Listen, if you're uh, planning on staying in our community, I might just have to introduce you to my daughter. You might even run into her on the way down to the tavern. If you do, just as a little joke, call her a little Red Riding Hood. She's got a riding hood and a basket. I wouldn't want to frighten her. The tavern is this way, right? Just down that road. See you around, sir. Call me Daniel, Mr. Reed. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Deliveries down, free to go. Victor! You lazy thing! What are you doing taking a nap in the middle of the woods? I'm going to tell Father Boris on you. Wake up! Wake up! Dear Mother of Mercy. I feel no evil, for thou art with me. Daniel didn't say anything about a crossroad.
Let me see. Okay for tonight. One more night. One more night. I hope Dr. Peter Frankenstein can help me. Like Alana to be late. She's out here. I must go find her. Oh! The sun has already set. It's too late. You know what is out there? It's St. George's night. There is a man at our door. Well, let the poor soul in. told I could get a room and a meal here by a farmer up the road? That's him there, Daniel. You've seen this man before? During the day? I would have been here sooner, but I got lost. May I come in? <sighs> come in. Did you see Alona? My daughter. Little Red Riding Hood. No, I didn't. I took the wrong fork in the road. Our paths never crossed. I'm so worried about her. This is not like her at all. Would you like me to help you find her? No. No, thanks. It's dark. It's best we stay here. Daughter. Daughter, get this man a room. Yes. Please, come with me. I'll get you all set up. That would be great. Also, may I get a meal as well? But yes, of course. Father is an excellent cook. So I've been told. Follow me, sir. Call me Cream. What an interesting name. This way, Creighton. down here. Come out. got a lot of work to do. decorations. 
about that one. I'm here to see Dr. Peter Frankenstein, which reminds me, do you think I could hire someone to take me to the chateau? I don't see why not. It's funny though, you're the second person to ask after the chateau. The second? Yes. Peter Frankenstein's daughter. She was just here not that long ago, dressed in men's clothes. Dr. Frankenstein's daughter, you said? Mm-hmm. It's funny, none of us even knew Dr. Peter even had a daughter. Just don't mention to her that she is a girl doctor. She hates that. And then there's Alana. There are wolves and other things. Yes, wolves. last night who was a doctor. We'll take her there. We'll take her to the Chateau Frankenstein. Father, go get the wagon. What happened? I don't know. She was attacked in the woods. But that's impossible. There wasn't... A... a what? Nothing. It's not important. Is there anything I can do to help? No, but um, if you want to ride to the Chateau Frankenstein, we're going to take her to see if the doctor can help her. That would be great. L l l let me help you with her.
Victoria, I had to leave at the last minute because I have just learned that rumors of a wild woman in the woods not far from the ruins of the old estate are true. If I'm right, we might be able to arrange a reconciliation between the estranged couple. With the help of my assistant here in Geneva, I hope to be back with her soon. Your suggestions for the creature's improvement were sheer genius. I'm very impressed. Give your brother my best. I know he's in good hands. Your loving father, Peter von Frankenstein. Well, he doesn't need to sound so surprised. Father sends his best. Lie quietly, we're almost done. Say goodbye to these relics of your past. Such a wonderful film, eh, my fiends? I mean, so far, so good, or <laughs> so bad, or so horrible, mm, so terrifying. <laughs> Either way, these young people, they really know what they're doing nowadays, getting back uh, into the group of things of the old uh, monsters. Well, with a little twist, of course, they have, they have to make it their own nowadays, you know. But ooh, what, what suspense, what thrills, what chills. It does take me back to those wonderful times of the, uh, the uh, 40s and uh, 30s, 40s with Boris. Karloff, uh, Bela Lugosi, and Lon Chaney Jr. <laughs> and uh, speaking of which, uh, Karloff and uh, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman and the Frankenstein, respectively, um, my beautiful wife, she made for me this past Yule some wonderful, uh, some wonderful items that uh, she makes resin uh, items, and these are just so wonderful. These are, are pure resin with with old uh, monster posters within them. This is the uh, Frankenstein poster from the original Frankenstein. And here we have, well, Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein saying uh, we were made for each other. Just the same sentiments me and my beautiful wife share. <laughs> uh, a lovely heart there. And, of course, this one right here uh, has Lon Chaney Jr. And also, well, a very mm, bodacious uh, well, not Betty Boop, but who is this wonderful, uh, everyone knows her. I'll let you see if you can recognize her from her uh, very ample assets, you might could say. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so did you recognize her? Well, well, if you did, tell you what, email us and let us know if you got the right, if uh, uh, what your guess is, and we'll let you know perhaps uh, on the next show or so if you got it right. <laughs> Ah, the wonderful old films. Ah, it takes me back to, to uh, when I was a little monster kid sitting up late at night waiting for the old, well, the old shock theater to come on. <laughs> right, Boris? Uh, well, of course, now we have Monster Movie Night for all you little kiddies and fiends out there to wait up for. Hmm? <laughs> so, let us get back to Joe Murrow as Frankenstein's monster in Tales of Dracula. Please help her, she's dying. Help who? Who are you? Please, doctor. We met back at the tavern. It's my, it's my friend. She's been injured. She's lost a lot of blood. Please, you gotta help Alana. She's gonna die. Fine. Bring her this way, then. The bite of a vampire. Her blood is infected. I can use this. What did you say, doctor? Nothing. You must wait outside in the parlor. Make a fist. If you can understand me, make a fist. Make a... Oh, never mind. I think I've got enough. I'm sorry, there was nothing I could do. Thank you, Doctor. I, I know you did all you could. I'll write up a death certificate and have it sent over to your house. I'm sure my father has some lying around here somewhere. I just wish there was more that I could do. I guess it was just the longest time. After all, you're not the almighty God with the power over life and death. No, no, of course not. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's something I really must attend to. You can see yourself out. Elsa, listen, I'm going to stay behind. I'm going to try and speak with the doctor. I have my own medical problem only she can help me with. Are you sure she's going to want to see you? Your girl's as aggrieved about Alana's death as we are. Did you see the look in her eyes? Even if she can't see me, I can use the walk to clear my head. Thank you for everything, Clayton. Well, at least we know the operation was a success. I thought you left with the others. 
Lose something? Yeah, something. One of my lab animals got out. Must have been a pretty big animal to do this. What was it, a gorilla? No, a gorilla would be easier to handle. Look, I don't have time to see you. Doctor, you have to make time. The moon will be full tonight. I need your help. Keep your hands to yourself. What does the moon have to do with anything? I'm a werewolf. <laughs> a werewolf? A lycanthrope? Yes. When the moon is full, I change. I kill. I've done horrible things. I want to be free of this curse. Your father said he would help me. Father isn't here. He's out hunting for something. So if you're going to turn into a werewolf, kindly do it somewhere else. I have my own problems to deal with. Big, big problems. I can't take the chance of going back to the tavern. I'll change and I'll hurt someone. It's the curse of the werewolf to kill the one he loves. I see. I can't take the chance of hurting anyone else. Very well, fine. Among other things, this chateau used to be a sanitarium, and I think we still have some tranquilizer guards. There are still some cells down here. During your episodes, you can lock yourself up here for safekeeping. How could I ever thank you enough? Well, you can't. If you have somewhere else to stay, be my guest. Now I really have to go. I'll go back to the tavern for my things and pay my respects to Daniel's daughter. You do that. Now, like my father, I have to go hunting. Just hold my tortured soul. Yes. In fact, starting tonight, I'll be staying at the chateau while I take treatments. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Shh. It's disrespectful to show happiness when... Anton, do you think it would be okay if I went in to pay my respects? I think Daniel would like that. I think he's rather fond of you.
Daniel, I'm very sorry for your loss. May I pay my respects to your daughter? Yes, please. rest for a while. I'm, I'm a little bit shaky. I'll help you to your room. Father, help him. Yes, she will help you to your room. You felt very warm. You must rest here until morning. No. No, do you don't understand? I can't stay here. Can't stay here? Of course you can stay here. Try not to upset yourself so much. You gotta listen to me. The full moon! I have to leave before. I must leave before. Before. Very strange. I fear for him. He seems very... tormented. <sighs> tormented? Around here everybody is tormented about something. Let's leave him to rest in peace. Father! I mean let him sleep. My dear Jessica, there are such beings as vampires. They do exist. The one I face is the head of the bloodline and the strongest of them all. This journal is evidence that they truly exist. Even had we not had the proof of my own unhappy experience, the teachings and the records of the past give proof enough for sane people. Is there anything I can get for you? Coffee, please. Sir. As I make my way to the village of Lagos, I will travel through many parts of Transylvania by train. It should be known that the weather changes quickly here, and you will need to get used to it. 
Once I arrive in the village, I shall meet with Father Thomas, from whom I received a telegram informing me of Father Boris's death. Dracula's castle is in the Fagaris Mountains of southern Romania, perched on a remote peak outside the village of Lagos. Father Thomas has also stated he believes that Dracula has taken a new bride, a poor young farmer's daughter, Ilona, to replace what we believe to be his last disciple, Ingrid, daughter of Fritz. Should I not return home by your 18th birthday, this, my journal, shall be given to you. Use it as you see fit, but always remember you are also a von Helsing, your loving grandfather, Abraham von Helsing. Anything else I can get for you? Perhaps an aperitif before dinner? Nothing more, thank you. However, I do have a letter and a package that needs to be sent out by the time we get to the station. Can you see that it's done? Certainly, sir. I will have it done as soon as we get to the next station. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're drinking all the profits. I, I am not drinking all the profits. It, it was the wake. Grieving men are thirsty men. Mind the bar. I'm going to get another cake out of the store. Don't bother looking for it. Looking for what? You know what. I found it and I hid it. Dr. Peter has told you more than once that whiskey's not good for you. Who is the parent here, and who is the child? We both know the answer to that. Yes, we do! He must be back. We've got to do something. Yes, I agree, but we should wait until we hear what Father Thomas has to say about this. We all know that Father Boris was killed.
Gentlemen, gentlemen, please listen to me. These are dark times for your village. I know now that Father Boris is gone and that we have lost the young girl, Ilona. Yes, your worst fear is back. Dracula is preying on the young once more. What? And I promise you, we will do something about this. Men, this is Father Sandor. Father, please sit with the men. Thank you. Father, we were told by Father Boris that Dracula was killed in England and that von Helsing was the one to kill him. Yes, I received the same word, but then I was informed by von Helsing that Dracula is on a boat heading back here. Father, why can't we destroy him? Dracula has many powers as well as other disciples who aid him during the daylight hours. Why would anyone help such a monster? I am not sure why they help him. Might he have them under a spell? I do not know. However, we do know this. Dracula has the physical strength of 50 or more mortals, and he can shapeshift at will, taking a form of a bat a wolf, or a mist of fog. He must have some sort of weakness. He does, according to von Helsing. One is the sunlight. He must rest by day in a layer of hallowed ground from this native land. Another weakness that can be used against Dracula are religious symbols, like the cross or holy water. However, it must be mentioned that only faithful persons are able to use these symbols of God. Father Sandor, please show the men what you have brought from abroad. Father, will you lead us in a prayer? Yes, of course. Gentlemen, please bow your heads. Lord, in thy holy name, I hereby bind Dracula's evil spirit from the air, water, ground, underground, and netherworld. I further bind in your name any and all emissaries of Dracula, that he shall be forever driven from this land, and that you, O Lord, shall enable us with the power of the Magyar cross, the very cross of which Vlad, Dracula, was once vowed to protect. Lord, hear our prayer against the evil of Dracula. In honor of thy mercy, amen. amen. Thank you, Father Sandor. Father Thomas, when will Von Helsing get here? Prior to our speaking, I sent a message to Von Helsing telling him of Father Boris's death and that Dracula has a new bride. At this very minute, he is making his way here by train. Daniel, why are you not at your daughter's funeral? Father, please, please, there must be another way. Daniel, you know there is no other way. We must do this. Please sit and calm yourself. She is my daughter. The thought of having a stake driven into her. Daniel, if we do not do what we must do, she will feed on others in the village. I understand. Father, when we took Alona to Dr. Frankenstein's, the doctor drew some blood from her. What? What? Father, earlier today, Stefan, Eugene, and I were scouting around like you asked us to. And we found Victor and Fritz. They were near Dracula's castle. They both had been impaled. This must be the work of Dracula. Daniel, 
Who is this man staying at the inn? His name is Creighton Reed. Oh, and there's something else I must tell you about him. Yes. That alone is viewing. He walked up to her coffin, and, and as he got closer, he passed out and fell to the ground. Now, I didn't think anything of this at first, but as Anton and Elsa were taking him to his room, he, he kept mumbling something about the wolf bane. What do you think? We must learn more about your guest. Father, what about what Daniel said about this lady, Dr. Frankenstein? Something is really wrong here. Yes. You and Stefan, go and take a look around the grounds. But do not get too close. Yes, Father. What is taking Father Nikolai? He should be here by now, Daniel. Come, we shall get you back to the inn for the night. Andre, please see Daniel back to the inn. And tell Anton to make sure he stays there. Yes, Father. When I'm done, shall I return? No. I have work that needs to be done before Von Elsing arrives. Once you get him back to the inn, go and check on Father Nikolai. Yes, Father. You don't believe me! But I tell you, I saw him! He, he was a great big man with, with a hairy coat on. And he walked like this. it is. It's upstairs in the stranger's room. Elsa! Elsa! Hey, the monster's up there. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It's dark upstairs. Go get a candle.
Let's not concern the other guests about this. We'll just tell them that he had another episode. A more violent episode. Ungrateful child, say something for me! How are another? He has had enough. I haven't had nearly enough. He has lost a daughter, and I am losing my mind. Nothing to do with this. We're going to have to dispose of him. 
Oh, but I do have something for you. Vampire's blood. One shot of this and you will be indestructible. No one will ever be able to stop you ever again. And if there was ever a time for you to be indestructible, it's now. Well, go get washed up and take that with you. You'd think I'd be used to this sort of thing by now. Não existe ninguém que se parando dentro de ti. Alona, come to me, my child. Share with me. Steady. I think this injection may have some welcome side effects. You see? You have no reflection, just like a vampire. Are you pleased? Don't worry, you'll get used to it. I wonder if you'll start thirsting for blood. No fangs yet. Oh, well, I wouldn't be the first in my line to be guilty of not thinking this through. But I'd better make a note of it. The blood I drew from the girl was infected by a vampire, and from what I understand of the lore, these creatures have amazing recuperative powers that, in turn, 
should guarantee my creation's ability to survive any attack and be stronger than ever before. Maybe I should chain him up again. I did not mean to startle you, but you have something that belongs to me, my blood. What could you possibly want with my blood? I take it you're a vampire? And why not? I've encountered a werewolf, chased after a monster, and had villagers warning me of all manner of strange things. So why not a vampire? You know what I am, but do you know who? I am. You are obviously the one who attacked the Alona person. As to who you are, or rather what your name is, I haven't a clue. I shall introduce myself. I am Vlad Tepes, but most know me as Count Dracula, which in the tongue of my native land means son of the devil. Count Dracula himself. This is not my day. You know of me. Your reputation precedes you. I suppose now you're going to threaten me with my death? If that were truly my intentions, I would have already ended your pitifully short life. But I've come to be as curious about you as you, no doubt, are curious about me. Follow me, Count. Dr. Henry Frankenstein, and this is his famous offspring. I would introduce you, but we never really did come up with a name for him. So, my good doctor, perhaps we have more in common than you realize. I don't follow. I must procreate by taking young maidens and making them vampires like myself. Your family procreates by its own unique being. He is the experiment. You may consider him a monster, but I was raised with him as if you were my own brother. I am touched by your close-knit family sentiments. I ask again, what could you possibly want with my blood? The idea of personal space is foreign to you, isn't it? I'm sure you're familiar with the doctor's favorite tool, the syringe. I can take from one and give to another. My blood in the veins of this. Now, I don't go around insulting your relatives. How dare you? I am of noble birth, and this thing is an abomination. He can understand everything you say. And first of all, I didn't know it was your blood. I thought it was some common graveyard vampire. But thanks to your blood, this abomination is now immortal and indestructible. Be calm, brother. Let's not be impetuous. Besides, our guest was just leaving, wasn't he? Doctor, I thought we could settle this in a more amicable way. Perhaps an alliance. You have no idea the forces with which you are playing. I see now that I will have to destroy your creation while you watch. Over my dead body? If you insist.
Vic. Vic. Victoria. Vic. Victoria. He knows I'm here. we met, I would follow you to the end of the world, Dracula. Well, you have come to the end of the world, Doctor. More Wolfsbane, Doctor? No! Holy water! <sighs> you are now on my land. On my soil, I am much stronger here. You will pay for driving me from England, Doctor.
Mm. Mm. Delicious brew, delicious brew. Thank you, Boris, for uh, for steeping that up for me, especially in my wonderful new mug with all the Frankenstein's and Dracula's, the Bride of Frankenstein, the Creature of the Black Lagoon. Oh, such a wonderful mug <laughs> to to uh, basically uh, steep in some good hot witch's brew. <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful film. What a wonderful film from some wonderful new filmmakers. I want to thank Joe Murrow for, for sending this in to us and allowing us to play it here on Monster Movie Night. Uh, we are so glad to be able to get these, these new and in, innovative uh, independent films like this, especially when it takes us back to a nostalgic time of monsters, the old famous monsters, that is. <laughs> ah, it makes me feel so important to, to, uh, to see my old fiends again, the Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and of course the Wolfman. <laughs> What about that ending? What do you think? I think there'll be a sequel. Hmm? <laughs> I do hope so. And I do hope that if it is, that we'll get to bring it to you here on Monster Movie Night. Just for you and you and you and even you. <laughs> well, it's time to retire my wonderful little artifacts back to their place in the museum here at Gargoyle Manor. And it's also time to retire myself to my old coffin. Uh, and Boris, you're looking a little sleepy yourself. You're ready for your perch? <laughs> I hope you've gotten your, well, bed of nails ready my fiends hmm <laughs> after all i do hear the uh rooster crowing crowing in the distance that means the sun is about to rise so you better get ready and uh, hide from it yourselves you don't want to get too much of a suntan oh no it's you use lots of lotion if you have to get out in that dreaded, dreaded sunlight. Ah, no. Anyway, thank you for visiting us again here at Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum, for another episode of Monster Movie Night. I'm your internet horror host, Bobby Gal Monster, and creepy old curator, along with my good fiend and co-host, Boris T. Buzzard. Saying to you, as always, until next time, keep screaming. <laughs>